Hello darlings and welcome back to my channel. My name is Robin Hahn. I'm coming at you today from the beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And today we are going to taste test every single tea I got for Christmas. Well, not today. That would be a lot of tea. But in this video. Now our friends and family know us very well. They know the amount of tea that we consume and they know that it's a lot. It's definitely the type of gift that we will immediately use and love. So we got a lot. We got, we, we got a lot. We got a lot. So I thought I'd go through them all, taste them all with you, and see which ones are really good. Now, I'm pretty adventurous with my tea, but if you are not, that is totally fine. You do you. As far as I'm concerned, tea is a no judgment zone. It's part of our own personal rituals that mean something to each and every individual and that we cultivate within ourselves. As Abby Sharp says, I'm not here to yuck your yum. That said, we are about to judge some teas. <laughs> as to my personal tea taste, Honestly, I will drink pretty much any type of tea if I think it tastes good, but I am primarily a green tea drinker, whereas my partner mostly drinks black tea. So what we ended up getting for Christmas was a little bit of both. I'll try every type of tea in this video, green or not, but just a note about a tea ritual of my own. I refuse to ever put any milk or sweetener in my tea of any kind, ever. Don't at me, I guess? If it skews the review or if any of these teas might taste a little better with some sweetener in them, still won't do it though. Before we start, if you were looking for a little corner of the internet where we could discuss opera, disability, queerness, cats, and tea, you have found it. And if you weren't looking for it, you have found it anyway. So go hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell so you never miss a video. And one more thing, I'm not a tea expert. I'm not pretending to be. I'm just a girl who got a boatload of tea and thought it would be fun to share it. So without further ado, let's taste test and review every single tea we got for Christmas. I uh, really should have tried them in some sort of order, but I did not do that. So what follows will be grouped by brand and will have nothing to do with the order that I tried them in. First up, the Granville Island Tea Company. The Granville Island Tea Company was established in 1999 by Deborah and Marc Mercier, and its iconic little store is located, guess where, on Granville Island in Vancouver. This small business does ship worldwide, with deals or sometimes free shipping to Canada and the US, so I definitely recommend checking out their website. Their little tea shop is uniquely Vancouver, and their selection of loose leaf teas are all completely delicious. Let's start with Granville Island Tea Company's Jasmine with Flowers. Jasmine tea is the most famous scented tea in China, and is typically made with green tea as the base, though white and black tea also get used. This particular jasmine tea comes from the Fujian province in China, which arguably has the best global reputation in terms of jasmine tea production. But how does it taste? I'll let early morning, no makeup, winter staycation Robin explain. Now to be completely honest, we did get this particular tea as an early Christmas gift, so I have been drinking it quite a bit, but it's the first time I'm drinking it on camera. So this is jasmine with flowers and with flowers it totally is. It's delightful and really light, a good morning tea. I really like it. Would recommend. Nine out of 10. Next, the Granville Island Tea Company's Pinhead Gunpowder Green. Gunpowder green tea is a type of Chinese tea in which the leaves are rolled into super tiny round little pellets. Rolling makes it less likely the leaves sustain damage and can help each leaf retain as much flavor and aroma as possible. Pinhead gunpowder tea is the most common type of gunpowder tea with large pearls as compared to some other variants. But the really important question is, is it yummy? Hello darlings, I am out with the Granville Island gunpowder pinhead green tea and it's much more traditional than the other ones that I got for Christmas. It's very green. In some ways it's like less morning-y. It's more like, oh, I want some green tea. I wanna get some studying done. I wanna get things done, which is great because I've been running around all morning. So it's exactly what I needed. Super delicious. I love me a good traditional green tea. Seven out of 10. Next up, the Acquired Taste Tea Company. Founded in 1996, Acquired Taste Tea is based in Edmonton, Alberta, in a single little shop I hear is completely adorable. They ship their really rather wonderful collection of loose leaf teas anywhere in North America. And where possible, their teas are also fair trade. Again, I highly recommend going through their website to browse their collection. Supporting small business is a thing we should all be doing right now anyway, right? Acquired Taste Jasmine Green. 
Jasmine tea carries many symbolic meanings in Chinese culture, with jasmine flowers being a symbol of eternal love. The scent of jasmine is also said to be the smell of heaven. Quite possibly true of this tea, too, because this one is delightful. The jasmine is a very soft flavor and not overpowering at all. I made an entire pot and drank it very quickly, even for me. 9 out of 10. Acquired taste, market spice. With roots in Seattle's famous Pike Place Market in 1911, Market Spice Tea is sought after across the continent and around the world for its blend of spices and its unique cinnamon orange flavor. Due to its popularity, Market Spice flavored teas are now available in a variety of different types of teas, from green to rooibos. But the Market Spice available from Acquired Taste is the original black tea. I first tried it while teaching on a chilly winter day. What did I think? So today I am drinking the Market Spice tea. Very wintry, very Christmassy, obviously, as you can kind of tell from the title. Cloves, spice, get a little bit of a, of a mulled wine type of a vibe. It's kind of a shame that this is caffeinated because I would drink this all day. A little bit less soft than a lot of the teas that I normally drink because obviously I am a green tea drinker a lot of the time, but super delicious. Super yummy, and I'm gonna have it all day. Eight out of 10. Next is stash tea. I don't think anything that I could say about them would be as good as what's on their website. So I'm just gonna quote them here and saying that stash was quote, brought to life by two hippies in Portland, Oregon, seeking the taste of a tea euphoria. While they are a much larger company, Stash says they are a certified B Corporation, meaning they're legally required to consider the impacts of their decisions on their workers, suppliers, customers, community, and the environment. Stash Organic Green Tea. This tea says it's made in the Japanese style, but appears to be produced in Brazil, which is unique among the green teas I normally drink. Now, the box says it's unrivaled in aroma and flavor, but ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm not 100% loving it, to be honest. Feels sort of basic? Don't get me wrong, it's not horrible, and I definitely will drink the whole box. It's just not my fave. Sorry, Stash. <sighs> that said, maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mind for this tea. It was sort of an emergency get tea and me so I can finish editing sort of situation. Five out of ten. Cat break! And now back to our regularly scheduled programming with Mighty Leaf Tea. I totally forgot to film the Mighty Leaf spot. Oops. Mighty Leaf Tea first came into existence in San Francisco in 1996 as the Little Shop Tea and Company on Fillmore Street. Since then, it's changed its setup a few times, changed hands, and become one of the most recognizable brands of green tea you can get in restaurants, at least around my area. That's because their teas are very approachable. They're good introductory teas. The tea I got from them is called Mighty Leaf Green Tea Tropical. If you are not a massive tea fan, but you do want to consume more green tea, then the Mighty Leaf Tropical Green Tea might be the tea for you. It will offend nobody. It's tropical and kind of pineapple-y. It's delicious. Seven out of 10. This last brand I'm dealing with today has the widest variety of teas, so I guess in this video I'm saving the most for last? It's Murchies. Here's the story. Murchies was founded in 1894 by John Murchie, who immigrated to Canada's west coast from Scotland after spending his youth serving tea to Queen Victoria when she was in residence at Balmoral Castle. The company now owns several stores across the Lower Mainland and Vancouver Island, and they operate an online store of teas and coffees that ships globally. This is in the order I drank them, not in an order that makes any sense. So we're starting with Murchie's Library Blend. This is a black green blend made of Ceylon, Jasmine, Kimon, and gunpowder teas, created in 1995 to honor the opening of the Library Square in downtown Vancouver, which is now an absolutely iconic city landmark. Somehow, despite my knowing just how popular this blend was, this tea was not what I expected at all. Soft and sweet, this tea sort of tastes like berries? In most black tea blends, I expect it to still taste like it wants milk or something, which I never add anyway, despite that. But this didn't seem like it wanted milk at all. Drinking it clear was easy. 7 out of 10. 
Second, Murchie's CBC Radio Blend. This one was created in 1996 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. To me, it's similar to the library blend without the berry flavor. Instead, it tastes like black tea softened with jasmine. Again, that flavor completely replaces the need for milk and made it an easy drinking tea without milk or sugar or any additions at all. I think I like it slightly better than the library blend, but not by much. I'd call this one a lawnmower tea in that you can completely mow through it very quickly. Eight out of 10. Next up, Murchie's Anniversary Blend. Ooh, shiny. This is a loose leaf blend of Assam, Kimun, Ceylon, Yunnan, and Gunpowder Single Origin teas that was also created to celebrate something. This time, the 125th anniversary of Murchies itself. Am I sensing a trend? The flavor comes across much more black than green. It is a really nice, rich black tea that happens to have a little bit of green in it. I wouldn't call it groundbreaking, but it's yummy, heckin' strong, and good for a kick in the morning if a black tea is what you're craving. Six out of 10. This one's Murchie's Golden Jubilee Tea. Once again, Murchie's made a tea to celebrate the creation, birthday, or anniversary of something. This very classic traditional black blend was initially created for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977 and reintroduced for her Golden Jubilee in 2002. On its tin, you can actually find the official Murchie's coat of arms given to the company by the Chief Herald of Canada. If that isn't royal, then I truly don't know what is. This particular black tea may be strictly traditional, but I also find it super complex and interesting on the tongue. It reminds my partner of a Lady Grey tea, something softer, more drinkable clear despite its strength. To me, in some ways, it sort of reads like the black green blends I often drink. I sort of lawnmowered through this tea too. Eight out of 10. Next, Murchie's Canadian Maple Tea. This tea does not appear to come with any further history tidbits. So have another true fact instead. Gosh, does this tea ever smell like maple? It does fall into the category of teas that smell more like the flavor they claim to have than they taste like it, but it definitely does still taste mapley. Another totally lovely black tea. A little simple, sure, but if you're looking for something sweet in your cup to put you in a good mood in the morning, this may be the tea for you. I'm not really a sweet tooth, so maybe I'm not exactly the target audience. Six out of 10. Next, Murchie's English Breakfast. Despite the name, English breakfast tea may possibly have first been defined in America, though it was partly popularized by Queen Victoria. Gosh, do her and her family members ever make a lot of appearances in this video. If you dig this royal chatter, this whole family will make many, many appearances in an upcoming video about a brief history of tea, so stay tuned. This blend definitely feels like a classic and not just in name. This is exactly what I would hope for in a bag of English breakfast. Exactly, no more and no less. Getting a good English breakfast at a supermarket around my house can be a challenge sometimes. And having this in the house solved a lot of problems. Will it change your life? No. Will it be a warm, gentle, dependable, good morning tea when you desperately need it? Yes, of course. Seven out of 10. Next up, Murchie's Scottish Breakfast. In general, Scottish breakfast teas are often more robust and heartier than the English breakfast ones. There's conjecture about that being due to the softness of Scotland's water, but let's get right to it. When it comes to the Murchie's Scottish breakfast, that 100% holds true. This is an active morning tea, a get up and go tea, a feel your pupils blowing open type tea. And it's yummy as heck. Just don't steep it too long. Seven out of 10. And last but certainly not least, Murchie's Irish breakfast. Traditionally, Irish breakfast is thought of as being between Scottish breakfast and English breakfast in strength, with something of a malty flavor in there for funsies. That's what I was expecting. Instead, I got something honestly really wild. Something about it almost tasted green? I don't know. I'm sorry to end this on a tea that I can't really describe, but it's my favorite of the breakfast teas now, so maybe that tells you something? Eight out of 10. And one last thing. We also got a Starbucks gift card from one of my partner's students for Christmas, and uh, that's gonna fuel us for a while. The Tazo Jade Citrus Mint isn't anything new and nothing I'm gonna write home about, but it technically did happen due to Christmas, so here it is. Pro tip, when getting your Starbucks tea, order one tea bag in a grande cup. They charge you for a tall, and that way you don't get the sudden instant oversteeping problem that you can get with the two bag arrangement. Five out of 10. 
And there you have it. It took me about a week and a half to film all of this and to drink all of this tea, but I did it and I'm proud of myself. But I hope I've introduced you to maybe a brand or two you might want to explore a little more of, or maybe even taught you something about your favorite tea varieties you didn't know before. But now that all is said and done, what exactly is the verdict? My favorite is probably the acquired taste jasmine green tea, with an honorable mention going to the Granville Island jasmine with flowers. Wildcard award goes to that Murchie's Irish breakfast though. It's just... Obviously a giant thank you to our friends and family for gifting us this beautiful bounty of leafy beverages. We love you. Seriously, the way to my heart is through my stomach with tea. If you got any amazing teas for Christmas, I would love to hear about them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this super chill exploration of my 2020 Christmas tea haul, please click that little thumbs up button at the bottom of the video. Again, if you feel like sticking around, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell. Keep the comment section full of joy and love, and I will see you in my next video. Let's do this thing. Market splice, blah, 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 splice. I had a lot of fun and a lot of tea. Wearing lip gloss was a mistake.